sanctions are working, number one. And number two, the myth of Putin as the world's energy czar is running out of gas. It's just a, a lot of smokescreen. In fact, uh, he needs to sell energy to Europe more than Europe needs to buy the energy. And he can't pivot east like he says. He's, he's running out of cash and he's in a far worse economic bind than he lets on. Because one argument that's been, that we've had on our program is that because the cost of gas and oil are going so high, even though he's selling less to Europe, the cost, the price is more than making up for that. And he's actually doing rather well out of a crisis he himself has engendered. Is that not true? It's not true because Gazprom's production is down 30 percent. He can't sell it. So it, it, there's so much less of it that the uh, a spike in the price was not enough to make up for the loss of the volume. Uh, he he's unable to pivot and sell it. It's a uh, a myth that he can uh, sell that gas uh, to China or to India. It's it's all it's all liquid. It's all uh, gas. It's not liquefied, and it won't. And it's got to travel through pipelines. There aren't those pipelines. There's there's a, a singular pipeline uh, that that goes to China. And it's a pretty minimal pipeline. It's uh, uh, it's maybe. Um, uh, <clears throat> enough uh, enough energy to light up leads perhaps it's very minimal it's it's not even 10 percent of what goes into europe uh so they don't have those pipelines and meanwhile uh, germany is way ahead of schedule in, in the creating uh liquid national gas uh, facilities that that weren't even on the books four months ago are now pretty far along that they'll be able to pick up a lot of gas coming in from norway uh, the u.s and elsewhere uh so uh that's um, that's just a uh, it's just a myth. Uh, he can't pivot east with that stuff, and it's the same with oil. It's uh, they produce oil very inefficiently, so he has, they have quite low margins. So the, the the least efficient oil producer to get that oil to uh, to China or India it takes those tankers thirty five days instead of you know getting the uh, the oil to, to Europe in in a day or two, uh, and so. It's uh, it's it's very hard for him to, to, to pivot on that. And uh, and he's running deficits, unable to finance the deficits because nobody uh, since they have defaulted, nobody nobody can can be a lender to help bail them out of their defaults. No, exactly. So, so, so the energy problem uh, is very clearly articulated. What about the, the, the on top of that, the impact of all the other financial sanctions? What what are those things taken together mean for the current state of the Russian economy as you, as you judge it? Well, it's, it's just the most profound marriage of private business exits we've ever seen in, our, in world history, coupled with governmental sanctions. To have 1,100 global firms, 1,000, almost 1,200 multinationals pull out, even by Russia's extrapolations, they think it's around 12, 15% of employment right there, of the direct employment. The indirect employment, because of those foreign companies pulling out, uh, it's somewhere around 35, 40 percent of the workforce without jobs. Even the mayor of Moscow admits, admits hundreds of thousands of people without work. And, you know, if he's admitting that, it's quite a bit more than that. There's a, a flight of talent of uh, uh, Toss and Pravda are both acknowledging somewhere between 500,000 and 700,000 top IT engineers taking off. Every sector is down. Every, uh, some are, are down 75, 85, 90 percent. The uh, quality of life is plunging. You can't get replacement parts. Uh, and the idea of the imports are down roughly 60 percent. They need the imports because Russia, other than commodities, brings nothing to the world market. Uh, uh, so what they need is everything. So how close are we talking about to, to what amounts to a failed state here? Because the question in everyone's minds is, can uh, Putin continue to, to fund this war? How close are we to sort of economic collapse in Russia? He's got about 600 billion in reserves right now, uh, his sort of rainy day fund, his his surplus. But he's eating into that handily. They've drawn down about a third of it since the start of the war. And half of that is uh, is pretty much held in check. So uh, because it's uh, it's been frozen by the West and, and hopefully that 300 billion will be reallocated to uh, to Ukraine for its rebuilding. So it depends how much he ramps up the war effort. For example, uh, that would that would drive him. Right now, he could perhaps uh, survive with tremendous hardships for two years or so, uh, with uh, well done sanctions, with business exits uh, in Romania, with Nikolai Ceausescu, with Jaruzelski in Poland, 
they they do work. Uh, they can work, but they have to be done comprehensively. Uh, so what was a, a critical event this week was that the EU stood together. Despite all the cynics on the sidelines, they stood together for 15 percent uh, rationing of gas. That's perfect. It's just what they needed to do. Uh, and that's that Putin did, didn't see that coming. So meanwhile, it could be a tough time in Russia itself with all of these hardships getting only worse as winter comes. A very tough time in Russia. There'll be a, a few months of transition for Europe. But it's it. But the hardship will be manageable. Uh, and in fact, some of the worst of it is right now by just getting everybody on board to agree to these 15 percent cutbacks, which are profound. They're enormous. And uh, uh, the thing that, that Putin has done that people are just trying to realize now is that these economists and and some folks in my field, in your field, uh, that were thinking Russia was doing so well, oh, because the ruble is strong. Ruble is strong. It's, it's a managed currency. There's no market for it. It's like looking at their stock market has only fallen by 60 percent, which is a lot. Why? But why not 100 percent? It's because it's controlled. He won't. They won't let you sell yeah. if you have foreign foreigners who invest in the country, which is the only people who have any investments there are frozen. They can't get out. The, but any data on lending, loan origination, on air travel on capital inflows or outflows, on commodity exports, oil and gas, monthly output, things that were required as national income statistics for every country. Putin has suppressed that, and he's cherry-picked data, and he's putting out things to try to uh, breathe some discontent in the West to weaken the resolve to say that he's winning. He's not.